put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Batman Arkham City PC Video Game Review. Following the events of the first one in Arkham Asylum, the both Arkham Asylum and Blackgate Penitentiary are closed down and everyone within the two facilities transfer to the new facility entitled Arkham City. It is a portion of the slums of Gotham which have now been walled off and security is maintained by a private military firm known as Striker. Tiger, not Striker. And this is all done under the... It's, it's led by Quincy Sharp, who was the leader of the Arkham Asylum facility and has now become mayor because the incident at Arkham Asylum was successfully stopped. Now, he has put Hugo Strange in charge of the Arkham City facility and Batman is certain that there's something else going on. He feels that the situation is too volatile to confine. And the it, it doesn't exactly help matters that inside Arkham City the basically there aren't really prison guards as much as there are just these choppers flying around that sort of, you know, keep a, a lookout. And there are, there are walls with barbed wire closing off the area of Arkham City from the rest of Gotham. But there are no guards, and it's very much... What's that? I think it's the, the Sona rules. It's basically everyone can do what they want as long as they don't try to escape. So basically, in Arkham City, there are a number of different, you know, turfs of the different major villains. The Penguin, Two-Face, various of these crime lords have their own turf, and you can tell when you're on someone's turf. Two-Face you know, it's both goons and just, you know, signage areas. Two faces, you know, you've got the one good side, one good half and one bad half. You know, the Joker has an area too. And you've, of course, got this, you know, absurd clown, you know, scary and comical at the same time kind of stuff. Now, Batman enters, he is captured as Bruce Wayne and put in the prison and in a nice twist on the opening of Arkham Asylum where he was escorting the Joker into the asylum, here he is actually an inmate and, you know, walking with, you know, the, the cuffs, the, the leg chain, whatever, you know, ankle chain thing, walking in, getting checked in, and, you know, you've got various, like, prisoners from, it's, it's got that nice, thick atmosphere, very oppressive atmosphere of a, you know, of a prison, and this doesn't continue throughout the rest of the game, the, the atmosphere changes, 
which is good because I don't think it, it wouldn't really work if it was that atmosphere constantly. But anyway, you've got these prisoners shouting threats at him, you know, yeah, and you know, it's it's oh. Look at the, the pretty boy coming in here, the, the billionaire. Oh, you might not like our accommodations in here, that kind of thing. And, yeah, it's, it's very nice and, and threatening. Of course, not long after he dons the cape and cowl, and the Dark Knight now has to... Yeah, fi figure out what's actually going on. It doesn't exactly help matters. I've already said that. Anyway, that the Joker poisons him because of events that happened in Arkham Asylum. I won't go, I won't spoil that one here. And Batman now has a number of hours before he himself will die of the poison. And in addition to that, there is the lingering threat of the ominous sounding Protocol 10, which will commence within hours. I think at the start of the game it's like 20 hours, so Batman has two ticking clocks. Now, as per usual when I'm reviewing the second part, especially the second game of a franchise, I'm going to try to briefly cover the things that were true of, you know, earlier chapters, and is still true here. So we've still got this... <sighs> yeah, for, for one thing, we've got the freeform fighting, which looks amazing through and through. Basically, <sighs> As long as you're following along with the rhythm, and the rhythm, if you break the rhythm, it'll start back up when you hit, like, when you throw your second punch or so. And whenever you're in the rhythm, which is most of the time you're fighting, it looks amazing. The, the Batman's moves are brutal. You've got this kind of slow down and speed up aiding you in telling when you should, you know, Basically, you've got these three moves. You've got, or you've got three functions that you can activate. You can attack, you can block and counter, and you can, you know, that's, that's the one move. Counter. Let's just go with counter. And you can stun. And these, yeah, these are the basic fighting moves. You can also, you know, do this kind of dodge evade where you can jump out of the way. You can even bunny hop over an enemy. And, you know, you can use gadgets. I'll get into that. But yeah, basically, if an enemy is attacking you, you'll want to counter. If not, you can, you know, attack. It's a good idea to go from side to side and kind of, you know, don't focus too much on one enemy. And as long as you're, as long as you don't spend like a full second doing nothing, as long as you don't as long as you don't get hit, and as long as you don't miss, you will keep being in the rhythm, no matter how much you're jumping around, using gadgets, you know, no matter how many attacks, and, you know, you can build up your street cred with that. Basically, you know, once you've done a cer certain number of them, you'll do what's called a critical strike, where basically you do the finishing move. And, yeah, I suppose... Yeah, so, so in addition to that, that's what it also was before. Now there are a couple of new enemy, enemy weapons, really. There's still only the one enemy type, and that, that indeed goes for even when you fight, like, really different enemies. Usually you're fighting just human goons, and they're wearing, you know, something that betrays their allegiance, you know, something that you, you can tell who they're working for, basically. And, yeah, even when you're not fighting these human goons, I'm not going to give away exactly what, but this does have a couple of different enemies. Basically, it's still all the same, so that's... I, 
you know, in, in a different... Let's go with Assassin's Creed, because the, this does beg comparing to Assassin's Creed. They've both got the, you know, hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as stealth, both open world. In Assassin's Creed, you have different enemy types, where, like, one might run faster, so if you're trying to run away from a fight, he might just run up behind you, you know, just quickly cut you, and, you know, you're not really running away anymore. Some of them might have, you know, well, there are guns in this as well, but, yeah, you know, some of them might be tougher. And in this, it's basically just that they might have a bladed weapon, which means you will have to dodge. If you dodge it, like, three times without getting hit, then, you know, you'll have successfully dodged it. And you, actually, you can get an upgrade, which, if you dodge all three times successfully, Batman will then instantly take down that enemy, so that's really cool, and you're like, you know, okay, am I gonna risk being cut by this guy, or am I gonna, like, try to dodge away from it, you know, yeah. You know, the, that actually, that gets a little, yeah, briefly, dodging away from it means not just clicking counter, but also pressing in a direction that moves away from the knife, and you have to time it very carefully. Now, they do, they try not to have too many of these, but that does get a bit silly when, like, you're, there are times in this when you're fighting more than one opponent who seems like they should be attacking with a bladed weapon, and yet, not all of them, it doesn't act like they're all attacking with a bladed weapon, so, yeah. Now, in addition to that, you've got, you know, some of them have these stun batons where if you attack, even if you've just stunned him, you're gonna hit the stun baton and, yeah, so you'll want to jump to the other side of him, then attack. Then you've got ones with a shield, you got to stun them, then jump over them, and Batman will, you know, attack them and they'll drop the shield. If you're just trying to jump over them, they're gonna block that with the shield because they weren't stunned. If you just stun them and attack, they're gonna block that with the shield. And then you've got these with... There are also ones with guns, but usually you don't really want to have to fight them, and this doesn't force you to fight someone with a gun that much. You usually are able to just stealth them, predator them, as it's called here. Now, Yes, so that leaves the, the the armored ones, where basically you just gotta stun them and engage in a beat down, I think it's called. And that literally is just stun them and just keep hitting strike. Now, the, the cool thing about this is, as long as they do remain dazed, which they will for know, a second or two after, if, even if you're not punching them, when you stop punching them, rather. So if someone's attacking from behind, you need to counter. You can do that and then return to the beatdown. And the... I think that basically covers it. Now the cool thing here is, these do sometimes overlap. Like, if... If you, if you attack an enemy with a blade enough, or outright take him down, the blade's gonna drop. So, basically, an armored enemy might pick up the blade and he'll be, you know, even more of a threat because you can't just punch him and he's now got a blade, so you can't regularly counter his attacks either. Now, yeah, that pretty much covers it for the regular ones. Then you've got, you know, your usual Titan thugs, you know, Titan... Think of it as, as Bane's Venom, I think it's called. Not a bat, Batman expert here, bear with me. So yeah, you've, you've basically got these bigger thugs, and they're slower, and they attack in this, like, they might charge at you, and, you know, if you jump out of the way and they're enemies, they might bowl through them. And sometimes this guy will have, like, a hammer or a, a scythe of, 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 okay. 
And that's basically it. And, and those you have to ultra stun, which means stun three times and then beat down. And some of them you can then get on the back of and use them to attack the other guys for, I don't know, I think it's less than half a minute before you'll then, before he'll throw you off and yeah, then you gotta do it again. And that's about it. Now, you can use gadgets and that makes it more fun and this does add some nice, you know, extra attacks that you unlock when you do enough combos and that can be quite fun and I'd also like to think on behalf of everyone else who kinda just forgets that these extra combo attacks are there I'm really grateful that you don't have to use these combo attacks because yeah, I tend to just get into the, the basic attacks and this doesn't ask you if you can do the attacks that I've already mentioned then you're fine, then you won't meet an enemy that you can't beat in this game. But there are a couple of, you know, unlockable, upgradable, upgrade to -able, upgrade to usable combo attacks such as I think it's called Search and Destroy Weapon, which basically, you know, if an enemy's got a rifle or something, you can go in, grab that, break it so that no one else can pick it up. So that's that's one. I think you can only do like one. Well, again, I didn't use these too much, but I believe you can only use one of these extra combo special attacks. Let's just go with special attacks. That's not quite as long and cumbersome to say. Ex special attacks that... You, you can only do one, and then you have to go back to, you know, reaching a new combo level, something like that. So that's one, you've got one where if you've knocked, you know, temporarily knocked out enemies, you can instant take them down at once with one of these. So, yeah, good stuff. But, still, it's, it's, it's and I, you know, it's worth noting that they of the old. So if you come fresh off of playing Arkham Asylum, you just add to it. You know, it's like my friend and I recently started playing Tekken Tag Tournament 2 or something like that on the Wii U. I hadn't played Tekken since like the fourth game on PS2. I could pick it right up and, and keep playing. You know, I could I could pick a new character and figure out you know, new moves, you know, cool moves with them based on what I knew of other characters. That's how you do this sort of thing, you know. And, yeah, here, they just built on top of it, so you can do what you did in Asylum, you just need to know a few extra things on top of that. Now, with that said, the, the fighting here is basically the same. It, it hasn't really yeah, it doesn't really go anywhere. There, there are no major changes in this game from the, the first one that really changed the overall experience. And I think, yes, I, I believe I will go into more of what we already had in Asylum, which still... Keep in mind, I'm not saying this is a bad game, I'm just saying, as a sequel, it's somewhat underwhelming. It's, it's fun, and they've made improvements, but it doesn't go anywhere new, particularly. Now, yes, so the, the atmosphere is still this great gothic. You've got a lot of gargoyles that you can swing on to. You can be on a gargoyle and then, you know, glide down to enemies to attack, and it feels very much like Batman, and it very much has this good gothic, you know, you're, you're emerging out of the shadows to attack. Now, the, the, the graphics are still great, very expressive face, faces, every design of a person is very lifelike, it, it's, it's, it strikes a really good balance between what looks good on comic book pages and what you would really believe in real life.
life. So it's, it goes in the direction of the Nolan films, for example, but it does not lose sort of the overall... You can still tell that this is, you know... Sometimes during the Nolan films you can maybe kind of feel like, well, this is kind of somewhat trying to take the comics and just, you know, make them completely realistic, and that's not necessarily what we as comic book fans want. So here, you know, you don't, you don't see it for a ton of time, but when, you know, when you see Batman's vehicles, when you see the Batwing in this, it looks like it does in the comics. You know, there, there are other things like that where, yeah, this is, this is still from the comics. It's just, it, it moves towards being more realistic, being more lifelike. Now, the, and you still have the 360 degree camera most of the time. If you're aiming a gadget, you can engage it if you're, you know, there are a couple of situations. Most of the time, you can. And there is an indescribable joy and glee to having just predatored an enemy and then grappling away to a gargoyle or the like, engaging detective vision and turning the camera to look behind you and you see, you know, the it's got the x-ray vision thing, so you see someone running up to the guy you just took out, and you know because you're grappling away that they won't spot you and they won't be able to, to attack you. So from there, I suppose I will go into the detective vision and then predator. Basically, detective vision, which has here also been upgraded, and I'll get into that briefly, Basically, it's for solving puzzles. They're not difficult enough to be labeled puzzles. It basically hold down a button or follow the logacometer. That's it. You know, so there are a couple of different you know varieties of this, but it basically does boil down to check a basic area or follow a trail of something. You know, you get, maybe you get a counter that says so and so many meters, yeah. So anyway, the, yes, it enables you to see through walls and the like, see, you know, x-ray skeletons. This is very useful for predator mode, and it can also be used to identify things that, you know, things are highlighted when they are, you know, useful to you. And that does bring up, briefly upgraded, in the first one, you could basically go through the entire game in detective vision. Here, they, you, you no longer really can because, for example, if you're outside, you have a compass because of the more open map. That compass disappears when you engage detective mode. And the compass is also where, like, the thing for directing you in the right, you know, in the right direction is. So, yeah, if you're using that. And it can also be quite, sometimes at least, during fights. It's not that useful. Now, that does bring up that... In the first one it was more forgivable because it was the first try. In this you really do have to wonder why they didn't do more with the detective vision because really everything that everything you can interact with, be it a door to another area, something that you can there, there are these engines which you have to shoot with electricity in order to get them working and that might open a door or operate a lift something. In the... So, so yeah, those and enemies who are armed and conscious, all of this will be highlighted in orange, which means that if you're looking from a bit of a distance, and gargoyles that you can swing to, also orange, you can't really tell if what you're looking at is a clump of armed enemies, if it's something you can interact with. Yeah, I 
I don't really see why, and, and then enemies who are either knocked out or not armed will be blue, which, again, I mean, there's quite a bit of difference between an enemy who just isn't armed and one who's actually knocked out. I don't know why they didn't make more, you know, things with it. maybe at least like a time, you know, they, they have rechargeable items in this. If you use the same thing, you know, or area specific limits, why not have some kind of thing where, like, if you go into an area, you can maybe choose, well, any armed enemy should be, let's say, red instead of orange, you know, and if you've done that, you can only do one more, so, you know, or do, do what Alien vs. Predator did, have more than one vision mode, you know, so have one especially good for finding out where you should go, what, what, to, what you can activate, have a vision mode for, you know, predator mode, I, yeah, heck, have one of them, like, time limited, so that if you, yeah, in predator mode, maybe it only lasts, let's say, a minute at a time. Heck, maybe it starts at 30 seconds, and you have to upgrade to get it to one minute, and if you don't get done what you want to get done with the predator, with, yeah, with the predator vision for that, that's what I'm going to name it from now on, then you, you know, you have to grab it to safety, and, you know, yeah, something, but it just, yeah, at, at this, I, I don't see why they didn't just improve it, it's, yeah, now, yeah, predator mode is, again, this very, it's, it's fun stuff, basically, Batman has a number of, you know, gadgets at his disposal, and he can, you know, if you're hanging off a ledge and there's an enemy above you and he doesn't know you're there, you can grab his leg, pull him down, and Batman will automatically attach a rope to him so he's now hanging upside down. And, you know, you can, if, if you're, that, like, below a grate, you can grab him, knock him out, these kinds of things, if you're behind him. Now, they've added some new takedowns, some area-specific ones, like you can double takedown now, you know, grab two, and basically he grabs them by the neck, knocks their heads together. Excuse me. So, Batman has a, a cartoony sense of humor sometimes. You know, you can, if you're standing at a wall that you could have broken anyway, Batman can, like, burst through it, you know, oh yeah, grab the guy and knock him out. And in addition to this, you can still use gadgets and the like. Now, the the thing with the Predator mode, and this, again, it was more forgivable in the first one, because they were just, they were moving into, but here, they, they added a few new touches to it, but it's still very much, you don't have that much freedom in it. If you're not doing what you, like, a lot of stealth games have something where you can make a noise distraction. You can do that here, but it's very area specific. Like, there's a museum at one point that you've got to predator your way through. There are a few, like, exhibits where you press a button and the voice will explain what you're looking at. And of course that'll attract attention. And then you can get this sonic battering, which will attract enemies that have this like, collar life sign thing, and, yeah, they'll investigate, and, you know, this is a good way to get one enemy to split away from the pack, and, yeah, and that is, you know, that's, that's always good to have in a stealth game, but here it's so area-specific, like, that museum, you know, and then, you know, yeah, sometimes you can use the sonic battering, sometimes you've got the, you know, yeah, sometimes you can affect something so that it, like, if you have one of those engines, that might also attract attention, but 
it really seems like they, yeah, they could have given you a lot more options with that. They could have made it not be so area specific. Like, the Sonic Batarang is a good idea because you can throw that anywhere that you want to lure them to, but it doesn't work on every enemy. Why not have a Batarang that works on every enemy? And, you know, you can't really hide other than, you know, you can go to a ledge, you can go under, like, yeah, under the floor with a, with a grate, you can go to a gargoyle. All of these places they can spot you though, especially if they see you moving into it. And it just seems like there, it would be good if there were areas where you basically couldn't be noticed, where you could just hide out for a little bit or, you know, something. But, yeah, and if if the game mistakes what you're trying to do, if you're, you know, grappling and you're trying to get to a gargoyle, but there happens to be a ledge along the way, you might end up staring into the face of the, the guy you were trying to grapple above. And, yeah, again, this is, this is the problem with the game being so streamlined, both in the fights and in Predator mode, sometimes the game will do something you didn't want it to do, sometimes in a fight if you direct him in a general direction, if there are like three enemies there and at least one of them has a shield or armor or a stun baton, you might hit the wrong one, it'll break your combo and you're then kind of stuck, you know, you've got several enemies right around you. Yeah, this is especially bad if it happens during a very important fight or an especially tough fight, one that has I believe they're referred to as lieutenant, thug lieutenants or something like that. The the Titan ones that I mentioned earlier. So so yeah, again, it it wouldn't be that difficult to fix this if the grapple was you can aim, for example, batarangs and other gadgets. Why not have that for the grapple? Basically, as it is, you're pointing the camera so that it kind of faces towards it and you press the one button that's set for grappling and you just, you know, most of the time, I mean, this does have a pretty good auto aim like the first one, but sometimes it really does mess it up. It's not going to, yeah, go to the right place. Now, I suppose that more or less covers the... I will also say the characterization is also quite good, like in the first. And when you encounter the various villains, they will act in a way that you, you know, you meet the penguin, and he's very much this local crime lord type. You know, you meet the Joker, and yeah, he's crazy, but there is a, yeah, you, he's unpredictable, but he's always both colorful and scary. And the acting, the voice acting, there are no complaints. It's every single line is, yeah. Now, I suppose that more or less covers that. So, this is a darker game than the first one. I think Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman, was the one who compared it to Return of the Joker, that kind of dark, you know, Beyond Batman, the animated, yeah. And I can see what he means. It's definitely, it's very, very dark. And it's, yeah, I, I don't want to say too much, I don't want to give too much away, but this does escalate things that, you know, from the first. At times, too quick, I might, you know, yeah, I would say it's, yeah, now, yes, the boss fights are greatly improved upon. This was one of the things in the first one that really had room for improvement. In that one, it was very much kind of just the same thing, the same fight. This is much more like your typical boss fight, and I mean that in a good way. The if there's a reason it's the typical kind of boss fight. You might have several stages to the one boss. 
you know, there will be a specific kind of, like, one boss you go up against, Whenever you use one of the tactics you can use to hurt him, he's going to cut it off for future use. He, you're not going to get to use the same attack on him twice. So, you know, there's that. So, so yeah, you have to go through all the different tactics you can use against him in order to win. All the while, basically, predatoring. If, if he spots you, he's going to take you down in two seconds flat. You know, then you've got some that are really big and then you maybe can't touch where you just where you maybe have to avoid a number of attacks. Some of these bosses there are thugs that you also have to deal with. You know, various things like that. No two boss fights in this are alike, so that's really good. And the boss fights also just tend to be interesting and employ interesting Batman villains, so so that's good. That does bring up that this is bigger than the first one, and thus, you know, it includes a lot more villains. Now, in part you could say that with Asylum kind of being a nice introduction for newcomers, this one could be bigger because, you know, you maybe expect people to have played Asylum, that's what I thought going into it. Honestly, they don't... There aren't too many things. I mean, there are points that might overwhelm you. There, there are a lot of villains in this. But really, you do get, like, their, their little, you know, description of who they are and what they're doing. And, like, their dialogue. While sometimes cliche somewhat cliched, is very much this, it fits their character and it describes their character. Like the first time you meet Two-Face, he's doing his signature thing of flipping a coin. So, you know, if you've never heard of Two-Face before and you see that, you're like, oh, that's the, yeah, okay, now I get it, you know. And they, yeah, they tend to be quite good about that. However, and this is, yeah, this is some, something others have pointed out. The plot is more or less an excuse to meet all these different villains, and then you beat them up, and that's about it. There's not that much, like, interesting, overarching, really impressive plot. And that, when you play the first one, basically it's Joker's in charge of Arkham Asylum. And that's like, this is gonna hurt. A lot of people. I have to stop him. Batman has to stop the Joker. You know, and it, it very much feels like he could do anything. He could... You know, he is... He, he plans things so well, and just... Yeah, it's, it's a terrifying concept. And it really makes for a good game. Like, if you had that kind of concept for a comic book, the comic book might not be long enough, but, I don't know, it would have to be a miniseries or something for it to really do it justice, but a game, that works. And he's taunting you throughout the game like many, you know, many nemeses in video games, you know, every once in a while will taunt the hero, and that can get annoying, but Joker, the, the, you know, the, the backstory between him, the, the, the history, between him and, and Batman, and just Joker's messed up sense of humor, and, and all this stuff really makes for great taunt material. So, whenever you're going through that, yeah, the, the things he'll say is really, yeah, very, very scary and really fits. And here, there are a lot of villains, and they do kind of, yeah, you just... You meet one after another, like, you encounter Penguin because he is, he is doing something that you need to, you know, I don't want to give away exactly why, but when you play it, you will be able to tell, oh, that's why the Penguin is even in this. And, you know, when you meet Two-Face, he's got a prisoner that you have to, you know, rescue. And, you know, you spend a bit of, of this just rescuing hostages, which makes sense. 
and that's kind of it, like, it didn't need to be these villains in these parts of the game, and in fact, so many of them have so little time, and again, they, they do, you know, if, if you haven't played before, if, if you don't know much about Batman, or if you just want the, the if you just enjoy the, the, the basic gist of this character, then it will very much, I mean, they do tend to hit the nail on the head with the characterization, but they're not doing anything where you're like, oh, that is so that character, you know. Actually, one of the only ones, again, is the Riddler, where, you know, you're finding Riddler trophies throughout. This has, like, I think 440 total. I get wanting to, you know, go above and beyond the first one, but that is a pretty ridiculously high amount. I, yeah, I, I feel like there's a nice middle part. I thought that for the first one, for the, the scope of the first one, the amount of riddles was quite, uh, quite fitting, honestly, now. The, but, but yeah, so a lot of the villains in this didn't really need to be there, and whenever Joker shows up, he steals the show, and whenever you're dealing with another villain, you're like, why isn't this just another Joker in charge kind of thing? You know, I I get why he's in this. I mean, and, and I'm not complaining that he's in this, but objectively speaking, the first one was very much you're dealing with the Joker and he's extremely dangerous. So bringing him back here, I feel like they should have gotten a different villain who also has, like, you know, something really compelling so that, you know, we as fans were really grabbed by that. And that does bring me to Hugo Strange. I will admit I don't know a ton about him, but even so, in this game, there's not that much. It didn't really need to be Hugo Strange in charge of the facility, I guess. Okay, so, to, to list the various things that make, you know, that, that are interesting about him, his involvement in the plot here. He's in charge without having, you know, I mean, the Joker, it's because he escapes and then he takes over because of his thugs. Here, Hugo Strange is just in charge. He was appointed this position. So that's interesting. You know, you've got that he... Yeah, so so you've got that. I'm not going to go into too much detail with, with that. And you've got that this is not a traditional prison or asylum. Like, I mean, it's one thing that he puts all these, you know, criminals in there from, from Blackgate Penitentiary. He's also putting these psychopaths in there. And it's kind of just survival of the fizz. And there are, you know, you encounter political prisoners in there that are, like, getting, you know, decimated by these, you know, actual hardened criminals and these psychopaths. So... Yeah, and, and just, I mean, Arkham Asylum, at least theoretically, you have this, you know, hopefully they're being treated for their, you know, yeah, their, their mental illness, and here they're just left to their own devices, you know, so that's interesting. That's, that's also a nice, you know, twisted kind of, and you have, it's, it's also kind of, it works as, he's, he's a psychiatrist, and it works as this sort of twisted experiment or methodology even of just a, a brilliant but insane psychiatrist. You know, it's, it's very like Skinner box kind of, you know, we'll, we'll leave them to their own devices and just, yeah, I mean, look at what actual psychologists did in the 60s. It is some pretty nightmarish stuff. So, yeah, 
in this, it, you know, that makes sense, that, that works as that kind of thing. But, it didn't need to be Hugo Strange, and there isn't that much to him, kind of, he doesn't really leave much of a mark. And I can appreciate that, you know, following in the Joker's footsteps is a, is, he's a hard act to follow, just ask Bane. But still, it feels like they could have, I'm not saying that Hugo Strange isn't interesting, I'm saying they don't give him that much to, I mean, there's the basic core concept, and that's about it. And with the Joker in charge of the asylum, it's just this, it's, you know, the madman is running the asylum. The, th these doctors who are trying to help patients are now prisoners in their own facility. And, you know, in, in the first one, the Joker will leave these big wrapped boxes that are like, you know, gift wrapped boxes. And it's like, you don't necessarily know, is that, is that going to be a bomb? Is that going to be some of his chattering teeth? You know, it's, yeah, it just, it really gets that kind of, maybe they shouldn't have gone with Joker in the first game, maybe they should have saved him for this one, I don't know, it, you know, and just built up to it with a, but, yeah, and again, I don't know enough about the, the Batman mythos to suggest a better villain. Obviously, the Joker is, you know, a fantastic one, but they probably should have. It, it's, you know, yeah. And it's it pretty clear they understood as well, because as much as there are a lot of villains in this, the Joker does get more time. That's not really a spoiler. He's one of the first you encounter, and you encounter him several times even early on. So, yeah, it's it's clear that he is the most interesting of the, the ones. And, yeah, it just... And that brings me to the, the more open... This is genuinely more open than the first one. When I played the first one, I was a little... It's a bit underwhelming in the first one. The first one basically shouldn't really have been open world at all. It shouldn't have attempted open world at all because it doesn't really get there. Like, you've got the, the hub level of the island itself, or, you know, more than one, basically. But the, the island itself, the outside, you can go, you know, to basically any area you want. But... Once you're inside, you have to follow the exact paths, and yeah, it's it's just not very. I mean, heck, if if that's open world, then the thief games are open world. You there are a lot of different paths, and you can open up shortcuts as you explore. But that's it. This one is generally is open world. It's like the map is about five times bigger than the first one, and you can go anywhere you want at pretty much any time, you know, barring being inside a building or, you know, being on a mission that requires you to move in a certain, yeah. And, and I, I do like, in this you get to, you know, not only can you glide down, you can also swoop upwards by a thing called dive bombing and then letting go of the dive bomb, dive bomb and then you'll swoop, swoop up, and you can also, again, use the grapple, though that does feel distinctly Spider-Man open world-ish. So, yeah, maybe, you know, I prefer the, the swooping, I will say. Now, that does, yeah, with, with it being so open, at times it's too open, and you're like, you know, trying to find your way to the next goal marker. And with that said, it's, I found that one of the bigger problems with how open it is now is that it's still all very gothic and very nasty and desolate. As, as I mentioned earlier, this is the slums. You know, the first one, it was Arkham Asylum. That's not, that's not supposed to be a nice place. You don't get tourists there. This isn't then the slums, so... 
in both cases, it's very dark and nasty. And that's kind of, that's the atmosphere you expect for Batman, so of course, but that's because they, they really want the whole game to have that atmosphere. And this is where typical open world games have to make that, you know, you, you, you have more control over the story and better, you know, and, and a thicker atmosphere, or you have an open world, you cannot have both. And in this one, they very much compromise the open world in order to accomplish this atmosphere. So while it's still very open, it's also just, there's not that much interaction with your surroundings. And this is again, both of these are very streamlined, and I had expected that they would make it less streamlined in order to accommodate being more open world. And this is, I mean, when you're playing Assassin's Creed, you know, don't know why you would be, but to each his own, or Grand Theft Auto, which is actually a good game. I apologize. Yes, if you're playing one of those two games, it does have some atmosphere. You can very much tell that you're in a certain time period and you're an assassin and you have to, like, we don't really have to hide, but anyway. Or you're in this kind of inner city, you know, and you can very much tell which, you know, am I in New York, Miami, or, you know, I don't remember which one San Andreas is. San Francisco, I guess, yeah. You know, you can very much tell, but at the same time, it's not, it's not as thick as it is here. And because of that, it's more fun to travel around, you know, you can experience different things. You know, going through San Andreas, you've got slums, you've got, you know, this, you know, you've got this place that's like Hollywood with huge, expensive apartments with many, many rooms in them, you know, you... You get to go to Las Vegas with its gaudy neon signs, you know. In this, it's all just very nasty and dark. And I'm not saying... It's not so much that there are areas of this that are boring. They did do a good job of every... You know, they, they went out of their way to make every area very distinctly belonging to a certain villain and or have a, you know, have it have a certain significance in the, in the Batman mythos. And, yeah, it's just, you're always on patrol, and at no point can you go to an area that isn't just this very dark and dreary place. And, yeah, I mean, I realized that Gotham itself would also have this, because it's a gothic city, hence the name, but imagine if it wasn't all set at night. And heck, maybe you should be able to go to at least one or two different places, like, let's say, I guess Metropolis would really open up, then you gotta meet Superman. Make one up. Make up a you know a city nearby which isn't so dreary. You know, make some you know heck through go go across the 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 day. Have you know have some Bruce Wayne stuff where you have to go in and you know deal with business stuff. That doesn't have to be boring. You know, heck maybe you're going in and then like hostages are taken in your building and you have to quickly sneak into an area where you can retrieve your suit and then take them out and it's during the day so there's not too many places to hide. This stuff writes itself, you just... This is too limited in, in that. It's too streamlined. Now, the... This also has a, a looser focus with that, you know, with, with this... Yeah, the... the with this many villains. Also, for, for an open world game, you revisit too many of the same areas. And this is true even if you aren't going particularly for Riddler trophies. I'm just saying, completing the story, 
you'll go to so many of the same areas more than once. And, I mean, near the end I was like, this is new right now, no, I've been here before, and then, you know, yeah. And because of how limited the gameplay is, basically you've got predator and fighting. I mean, if you're going through an area which has a lot of, you know, good vantage points for guys to shoot at you, it's gonna be predator mode both times you visit it, or each time you visit it. And if you're going through this nice open area, it's gonna be a fight each time. You know, I was also hoping that maybe this one would sort of allow you to, you know, avoid fighting and use predator instead. Obviously, it's a bit difficult to fight someone who, you know, if, if the guys have guns, but I don't know, maybe if you had some sort of gadget which every 10 minutes of gameplay time or so could, you know, disable all guns in an area at once so you could fight them instead. And there may be, be times where that wouldn't happen anyway. You can avoid some fights because as you're, you know, gliding, gliding and swooping around Arkham City, you can choose to, you know, go to a specific, you know, yeah, close down on a specific area on the ground and then fight the people who are there. Or, you know, some of the buildings have, you know, outlooks, lookouts, that's it, lookouts. They have Outlook Express up there with, with snipers and everything. And you can take them out if you want. And this obviously affects how many you know, how fast do you get all the upgrades, how fast do you get all the XP. And yeah, that's entirely up to you, but that's on the outside, that's, you know, I'm not saying that it should be like on every mission and such, I'm just saying when you're going back through areas outside of the story, if you, if you go for regular trophies, the areas are gonna be dead, there isn't anyone there anymore. So, again, if you know, Grand Theft Auto, in, in San Andreas, if you're going around an area that, you know, if you're just looking around for something, let's say you're swimming and you want, excuse me, let's say you're, you're diving under, yeah, under the surface of the sea, you're looking for these, what's it called, the, those, those things, you know, under the sea, you know, there will be a lot of animals down there. It's provided Homer Simpson hasn't eaten them all. And yeah, it's it's it feels very much alive. And if you're going to different areas, there are gonna be civilians just you know, there are gonna be drivers. And this is again where I'm saying it shouldn't have been all just this prison setting. It should have had some day-to-day -day stuff. I mean Imagine if you were going around Gotham City, you could, you could somewhat patrol the area. You could, you know, and sometimes maybe you hear a scream, and you, you know, get to the area so you can, like, you know, save a hostage, something like that. You know, prevent a holdup. You know, and yeah, this this would be, yeah, it it would be much better done like that. Now, uh, the... I suppose that more or less covers the open world stuff. Now, there are side missions this time around, and that is something they do reasonably well. Basically, these are, you know, You know, these, these are based on the, the people inside the prison. So you've basically got these... Yeah. Basically, Victor Zaz calls payphones, and when you respond, he'll hint at where the next of his hostages are. So you have to get there in time and rescue them. This sort of thing you know, and yeah, that works quite well. Now, these side missions are very varied in length, and frankly, a couple of them are way too short 
but yeah, now I suppose yeah. So so with the I sh I should briefly go into something that others have pointed to, you know, critics yeah, critiqued in about this is that there was way too much DRM, and that is. Thankfully, no longer the case, at least if you get it through Steam, which I did, and, you know, then you no longer have to deal with Games for Windows Live, and, you know, the, the Securom, which, you know, if I recall, you know, ages ago when I still bought physical copies of my games, you know, the, well, barring Sound Hill Downpour, anyway, yeah, Securom was for the, the disc, so yeah. Really the only thing left of that is just Steamworks, you know, for if, if you're buying it through Steam. I swear they're not paying me. Now, yes, this does very much... Like the first, Batman makes some mistakes that lead to scenes that are cool and are also necessary for this kind of, you know, if your protagonist never makes a mistake, the plot gets somewhat boring. Now, the script is written by Paul Dini, the comics veteran, and I think it's called Sefton Hill, who directed this, the first, and the Arkham Night, I guess it's called, yeah. Also in this series. Now, the... I suppose that more or less... Yes, now, the, the challenge maps have online leaderboards, and basically there are 31 overall, you know, just regular maps, and they're evenly divided between Predator and Fight, and there are 14 campaign maps. Now, uh, campaigns. Every campaign is made up of a few of the regular challenge maps in a row, and then you have to complete them all in order to complete the campaign, and there are these, what's it called, modifiers, where you know, some of these are positive and some are not. Basically, you know, one that is positive is that you, you know, your gadgets can knock out with just one hit. One that's negative is that you start with less health. And there are maybe three modifiers for each campaign, and you have to use them all by the end of the campaign. So you'll want to plan, you know, you can see what the different, you know, maps are going to be and what modifiers you have, so it's like, okay, less health. Am I a good enough fighter that I could beat the fight without, with less health? Am I a good enough predator that I could predator it with less health? You know, that sort of thing. And, you know, maybe don't, maybe don't save the, the worst you know, negative one for last, or you'll, you know, so yeah. And I think you have like three retries if you, I think it's if you die along the way in them or something, yeah. Now there are also some downloadable maps. This is of course, I should have said earlier, I will be reviewing, th this is a review of the Game of the Year edition. Now there are some downloadable maps, so yeah, everything I mentioned in here is free. It came with the game when I when I bought the game. So yeah, you have some downloadable maps, some of which are not something featured in the game, such as Wayne Manor and the Bat Cave. So that's pretty cool. Now the I suppose that more or less covers gadgets. Actually. Briefly, before that, the, the helicopters patrolling Arkham City, you can get a, a lift on one of those. You can grapple onto it and just hang there for a little while. And yes, I suppose that is it other than, yes, so the, the gadgets.
after I've covered this other thing. I swear I'm gonna get to the gadgets though. You do have some Prince of Persia-ish acrobatics where, you know, you crawl, maybe you crawl along a ledge because you can't crawl up. You know, you have to climb, you know, under something, all these kinds of things. The reason I say Prince of Persia-ish and this, you know, is because it's much like with Assassin's Creed, there's not much of a hurry most of the time. You don't, you know, things won't collapse behind you. You can just do it over. It's... The game is very happy to reward you whenever you do something right, but very reluctant to punish you no matter how bad you do, basically. You know, there aren't very many timed objectives. For, for example, there aren't very many things where you really have to apply yourself in order to complete something. And in fact, because it's so streamlined, when there are these parts, it's often just frustrating because it's like Predator or Fight that's, I don't want to say unfair, but bordering on unfair, you know, and yeah, frustrating where a game can be very challenging without being frustrating. It's, it's a delicate balance and not one that streamlined games walk all that well. And I believe that gets me back down to the various gadgets. After this one. Yes, so the, the, uh, was, yeah, so other things that you could, you know, that could make this more interesting as an open world. Maybe you'd have to, like, attach some transmitter thingy, receiver thing, on top of certain buildings to aid your GPS so you get a more, you know, maybe the map isn't fully realized at first and you have to get these, yeah, something like that. You know, maybe there there are bases specific to, I mean, there are bases, but what I'm saying is, yeah, each villain would have a base of operations and he'd be supplying the city with something specific. Let's say the penguin's base supplies the the other prisoners with guns. You know, he's making dough off that. If you take out his base and, you know, it should culminate in a fight against him, or at least a lieutenant of his, you know, two-thirds of the weapons in the city are now gone. You know, something like that. And you'd maybe have to predator your way into the base. And this would be entirely optional. I'm talking like taking over like in, in Assassin's Creed from the third, you know, from, from Brotherhood and onwards, where you have to get into the, the camp and take out the leader and then light something at the top of the top, something like that. Yeah, have that in here. And this game really doesn't have an excuse because Brotherhood had come out by this time. In fact, you, you could argue that San Andreas did it even before Brotherhood with, you know, turf wars, so, yeah. Now, I think that... Yeah, and, and stuff that could, again, make it more interesting is, let's say you had different types of armor that you had to choose between, and, you know, and they vary very much in how fast and how strong they are. So, you know, the faster they are, the less armored they are. And, you know, you could order this from the back wing. You could call it in and it'd be dropped on top of a of a high building and, you know, you could get... Heck, maybe have that tall building then, you know, covered by, you know, laser-sighted snipers as, you know, there are plenty of those in the game, so, yeah have that be, so you really want to make the right choice about the, the armor, you know, and maybe make sure to clear the way for some hostages. I mean, you rescue plenty of hostages in this, but it's mainly just predator or fight. Maybe have, like, well, this particular place in the city is much safer, so 
I have to get these hostages from over here to all the way over there. It's a couple of hundred meters. There are, you know, enemies that I have to predator along the way. And, you know, maybe you'd have to go a little ahead of them. Maybe just predator enemies and then tell them now you can proceed a little more. Or predator all the enemies, then tell them now you can go all the way. Something like that. You know, heck, predator then tell them they can go all the way, and then be nearby, because then some thugs would try to hold them up, and then you swoop down, fight, you know. I'm saying this stuff writes itself. And I think that was about what I had on that point. I... Yes, just briefly, there are three difficulty settings in this, and if you complete it on normal or hard, it unlocks a, a mode called New Game Plus, where you keep everything you had earned up to that point, and you just you play through the story mode again, and now it's tougher. And, yeah, so that's, you know, that's obvious, a lot, obviously a lot of fun. You can use the various gadgets from right away, but it's also tougher. And that's definitely so. I mean, I will say, in in offering a challenge and having consequences, this does beat Assassin's Creed, but, and I hate to say this as a fan, but I must as a reviewer, other than that, this doesn't, this doesn't really beat Assassin's Creed that much, and you know how I feel about Assassin's Creed. I mean, every, in, in my opinion, every, every, every creative expression has to make a case for its own existence. And while I'm not saying that this doesn't win that case, it could do a lot more to present that case. They, they really kind of just... It, it feels more like an expansion pack than a sequel. There, there isn't enough you know, big changes. And again, this is where I'm saying that something like Grand Theft Auto, there are so many changes between Grand Theft Auto games, and not every single one of these changes are always fantastic. Not all of it is refined, but this game, everything is refined, and there's not that much new to it. Now, I suppose... I do believe we finally reached the... the Gadgets. I, I suppose this calls for a drum roll. Yes, basically, the gadgets, as I said, you can use these just going through the game. Sometimes they're necessary just to pass an area. Some, some of them can be used in fighting. Quite a few of them can be used fighting, and some of them are very useful for Predator as well. Now, you still have just your, your average batarangs, you know, you then you have this remote controlled one, which you can now, like, you, you can slow it down, speed it up, it can be charged with electricity, you just have to find a source of electricity to fly it through, and you can basically, you can U-turn it, which is, yeah, quite quite cool. And of course the camera follows it, and it has a certain range. If it, you know, if it goes too far, I think it's a couple of hundred meters or so, yeah, then you'll, you'll lose track and you'll just cut back to Batman. Now, the, the remote controlled one can also be configured to turn back around, so you can throw it at an enemy and it'll swoop around him and knock him on the back of his head. Uh, that was that was a bit of, you know, depth perception fail. Swing him, you know, back, back of the head, knock him out. Not take him down, but knock him out and then you can, you know, so this is obviously very useful in Predator, for example, where let's say there are two guys and they're, they're covering each other. If you, you know, knock one of them out with that, then you can go for the other one and then return your attention to the first one who has probably woken up by the time you've knocked the first one, the, the second one down. Yeah, something like that. You know, you've got, 
you've still got the cryptographic sequencer. In addition to cracking codes, you can now also listen to shortwave radio, something like that. Yeah, so you can listen in to like the the radio of the, you know, yeah, just the news. You can listen to the police radio, and then there are like, you know, gang members will use it as well. And this is, you know, fine enough addition. It basically it fleshes out more. So. Yeah, that about covers that one now. You and and you still have the that you know explosive gel and that can now also be used in you know it could be used in Predator before. Spray it on a surface, lure an enemy close, you know, detonate. I sh I should mention you have a number of the you know, equipment that you gathered over the course of Asylum that you, you start out with in this, so that's pretty cool. And basically all of it has some kind of upgrade. So, so yeah, the, the, the explosive gel can now be used in fighting as well. Everything that you can, every, every gadget you can use in fighting is basically that you, you know, it has a quick fire button, so yeah. The, the explosive gel is on 3, double press, double press 3, and Batman will do a jump flip kind of thing, spraying it on the ground, and if you double press 3 again, he'll detonate that. So, yeah, that's, that's good for a bit of crowd control, obviously. Now, the... Eyes... Yes, yeah, so so you've got. I'm not sure I should give all of them all, all of them away, but yeah, you have these. I've already mentioned you can electro charge engines and the like. You can also use that gun to stun an enemy, and if you use that against an enemy with a gun, he'll literally just fire randomly. And you've also got this trigger device kind of thing where basically it can blow up mines you know it's remote trigger it can turn off guns and the like without the guy realizing so he's gonna stand there pressing the trigger buying you some more time and at least for the mines I didn't use it so much for the guns at least for the mines you can be like it, it, you can only do it so many times in a specific area, so again, you want to make sure you think about it. I wish they had done more of that. Most of these, it's just, you know, a recharge period for, for that kind of thing. Now, the... There's a pretty good variety to side missions and, and you know, the different areas and the like. I mean, again, pretty much everything is, like, desolate, decayed and such, but, you know, there's a subway station, you go into a, a courtroom, yeah, there, there are a number of various locations. This still auto-saves at, at checkpoints. There is a little bit of a problem now that so much of it is outside, because how then do you kind of, you know, I mean, I recently played Sound Hill Downpour, and in that, you know, if you could just find your way into a small building, then you could go in there, and it would save, and then go right back out. If you were worried it wasn't saving enough. In this, yeah, it's not so much, I mean, if you're completing story objectives, sometimes it will, and, you know, even if you're outside, and if you go into a building, it will, but... Some of the buildings you're going into, that's to forward the plot, and you can't necessarily go right back out. So, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. Again, if they had just made, like, more buildings, you know, that you could enter, then that would cover it. You can change the... you can change direction on the... the what's it called? The line thingy. Line launcher. It can still be used just to go from one 
part of the area to another, but it now also, yeah, you can switch direction part of the way through without like dropping or anything to, yes, go around corners basically, and you can like go up on it and, and what's it called? Walk the line, just like, you know, Johnny Cash does. And this gives some new options in that, you know, you can place that above enemies and go to a specific point and then, you know, glide down to them or the like. Now, I, it again, it would be really cool if you could then, like, grab someone and pull them up. Actually, I'm not entirely sure if I've tried that with the grappling gun. Hold that thought. I will... Yes, it's possible that that's possible. The grappling gun can be used to disarm and, like, pull an enemy closer. And some of the upgrades are also very cool. They, like in the first one, the upgrades are very much tough choices. I really like that. Like, there's an upgrade where basically the... I think it's called, like, heat shield, where if you're up on, you know, one of those gargoyles, some of the enemies will have these, you know, infrared goggles or you know, night vision, something like that, and if you're standing still, the heat shield will keep them from spotting you, and you might think, well, isn't that the same as if an enemy without goggles? Not quite, because it will make them think, well, that place definitely isn't where Batman is. So they'll turn their back and then you can attack, you know, you they lower their guard for you, so that's really good. You also have a smoke bomb, uh, and, you know, this, it, it kind of, it really wants you to use this if you're spotted by enemies with guns. And it can be very useful. This is where, in the first one, you'd be prompted to grapple away. And you can also use it outside of that. You know, you can you can straight up aim it. You can straight up aim almost every gadget in this. Now, the... It's been said that the campaign of this is 25 hours and the side missions are about 15. I... It took me 18 hours to complete this. I did not complete all side missions, but... Yeah, that that is the entire story mode. And also, also isn't all Riddler trophies, and two of these hours were Harley Quinn's Revenge, which others have pointed this out. It's kind of it didn't really need to be there. It's it's that's very expansion packy. It's you you don't need to have played it at all for yeah. It's it's fine enough, but there's not really anything there. There's no real engage engagement in it. It, it, it is fun to play as Robin, though, but I'll get more into the extra characters in this. Anyway, so yeah, 18 hours, counting Harley Quinn's Revenge, and Asylum took me 10 and a half hours just completing the story, but 19 hours when I gathered all the extras. So, yeah, it's not a huge... I mean, I'll grant that when I've collected the extras, this, you know, or if I will, I'm not certain yet, then it will have taken more time, but it's not really a huge extra kind of, yeah. Now, the... I suppose that more or less... So, so yeah, in, in fighting, and somewhat in Predator mode as well, you have more options, which is great. The... basically... Some of the most fun you can have in this are when you are truly free, such as when you are gliding downwards and swooping upwards. And there are these bits where you're standing on something that floats on the water and you're using the, the bat claw to pull yourself closer to an area, to, to sail in, in a way. And yeah, that's, that's a lot of fun. That's very, very free and... I wish more of the game was like that. And I think that covers everything outside 
of the extra characters. So, basically, yes, you can... During this game, you will occasionally, at least, again, Game of the Year Edition, you will occasionally play as Catwoman as well. She has the uh, heist-focused storyline of her own that intersects with Batman's at several points. And, yeah, basically, it's, it's a lot of fun to play as her. It's very, very different from Batman. And, uh, basically, all of the... All three of the extra characters have gadgets of their own, so I will I will briefly cover how different Catwoman is, and then go into the gadgets for all three. She can climb upside down on, you know, what's it called, grating and such, and from there, if not spotted, she can leap down and attack someone. So that's that's very fun, and she. I suppose that's more or less where she's really different from from Batman. And there are some of the Riddler trophies that are specific to her. Now, yes, basically the the three ones I've already mentioned. Two of them. The last one is Nightwing. Now, Nightwing has two stun batons. Robin has a bow staff, and Catwoman has her trademark whip. And they use those in, you know, the, the fighting. Robin's bow staff can extend and, you know, de and he'll do that throughout the fighting. Like, if he's taking out two, he's going to extend it, you know, two at the same time. If it's just one, he might make it, you know, really small and, like, you know, do this sort of thing. You know, Nightwing will use his stun batons for finishers and... Yeah, and just briefly stun someone and then go on to the... yeah. And Catwoman's whip can also be very effective. And there are, you know, she has some special upgrade attacks, if I recall, as well. Now, the... yes, they also have specific attacks. Catwoman has... she can throw caltrops, which enemies, you know, walking on to will will trip on and those are limited to, to you know each area has a limited amount of uses of that I believe sometimes the game could do a better job of telling you that because you go through the game so used to I can do whatever I want all the time so when it actually says you know this you know several times I thought it was like a, a bug or a glitch or something which I should mention some have reported bugs and glitches I have not. I think it was, again, something that used to be there, but with updates, it's been fixed. So, yeah. Basically, if... Yes, and, and Catwoman also has the, the bolas. And Robin has this bullet shield, which comes out of the bow staff. And this is, of course, not like... It won't work, like, forever, but, yeah. And, you know, it, it can allow him to proceed a little, and he can shield bash with it, so that's, that's pretty cool. And, and he's also got something called a zip kick, which is like the line launcher of Batman, but it has to attach to, you know, it can attach to an enemy where Batman attaches to a wall, and it can also attach to one of those, you know, hook thingies that the grappling, that the back claw can also attach to. Now, as I played Harley Quinn's Revenge, where you, you know, play as Robin, I realized that part of the thing with Robin is that he can get through areas that Batman kind of can't, or in different ways at least, and I wish they had just made it so that you could actually play as Robin and Nightwing in the main storyline. I think that would really increase, you know, replayability. And just, I mean, part of it is probably the whole thing with, you know, storyline dialogue. You know, they'd have to record all that for those two as well. But, yeah, outside of that, in fact, 
Nightwing and Robin, at least in challenge maps and such, don't speak of, that's, that's one thing that's worth noting. You can play as any of the four in the challenge maps, and in fact, any alternate costume you can also use. So, yeah. Now, the... And, and each of them has at least two or three. Batman has, a, I don't know, half a dozen or so. Now, yes, the, in, in the challenge maps and such, like, enemies will, you know, relate to it, like, they'll say, ah, it's Nightwing, or... If, where, where's Batman to save you now, bird brain? But Robin and Nightwing themselves don't say anything, so yeah, they, they feel a bit lifeless for, for that. Now, the... I suppose that... No, let's go, yeah, and, and Nightwing also has some, some things that... Again, they're useful in the, in the challenge maps where he can... Yeah, but not in, you know, he couldn't go through the story mode. I feel like they could just give some of the specific gadgets to the, the you know, these, to the three, and you could, you know, go through the whole thing with just, like, yeah, I feel like that would have been a lot of fun, or at least if there were maybe more specific levels to them. Once you've completed the entire story mode, you can choose to play as either Batman or Catwoman. There are these They'll be marked on the map, these character choose points, where, yeah. If you approach one, they'll offer you choosing the other character. Now, I suppose that... Let's see, Nightwing... He has... I don't completely recall what he has of, like, specific... He's got these wrist dart, you know, poison dart things that, you know, put the enemy to sleep. And actually, and, and Robin also has something called the Snap Flash, which you can use, it, you know, maybe mostly during fights, but you can attach it to one enemy and then, you know, quick pressing it again will detonate it. And it's this small, you know, it's not going to kill anyone, but yeah, so that's, that's also quite good. And I believe that covers basically everything. I should briefly go into Catwoman when she, like, you know, because she's got the whip and her agility, so when she goes, like, if she's grappling to somewhere, you know, Batman just uses the grapple, she uses the whip, so she'll jump and stick to a wall, and, and you have to press a key each time, you know, that, you know, it'll, it'll zero in, and then you press it. And this, again, it's too wide of a... Yeah, it's... they give you too much time. It would be fun if... Like, if you miss it, then you just fall down or something, so you, you really took practice, but, yeah. It's, again, like, like the first one, it boils down to, there are two types of gameplay in this. Fighting and Predator. And while they're both fun and reasonably, you know, open, you, you have a number of options in those situations, Ultimately, it's not open enough that you're going to be, you know, playing it over and over, like, you know, Thief, Hitman, Splinter Cell, these kinds of, actually, maybe not Splinter Cell, Splinter Cell's really linear, but anyway, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a great story, it's beautiful, it's addictive, but ultimately does not offer that much, you know, where, again, everything else that, any, any game should offer more than just, you know, if they had at least included proper puzzles. Yeah. I did, actually that does bring up, the, someone working on this pointed out that the reason they did not give you a vehicle, you know, they, like, they say that, oh, the, the Batmobile wouldn't be able to drive on the broken streets of the city, which is, of course, you know, well, you chose to make them broken, but then they go further and say that 
you don't get to use the Batwing because it would make it a different game, a completely different game, you may even say. And that's where I'm thinking, and how is this a bad thing? You, if you're just making the same ga game again, again, just make an expansion pack, you know. Instead, I think this would have been a ton of fun if you could fly around and, like, you know, launch Batman out of it, you know. This is actually a way that they could include more stuff. I've played a different Batman game where... I think that was based on the animated series, and there's a bit where you're flying the Batwing, and Mr. Freeze is ahead of you, and he's like trying to shoot back at you. You have to dodge that, and you have to fire upon him. I get that Batman doesn't use guns, but some of his vehicles could, at least. You know, it doesn't have to be lethal rounds, just something to, to give you, I mean, for crying out loud, even Assassin's Creed, from two and on, have at least one vehicle-based mission each. You know, it just... Yeah, it's... It would really have helped. And again, I mean, they could have had something with the Batmobile on this. They could have had maybe in a different location or something, but just, yeah, something. And maybe give the, the player some kind of gun, because that really does it. That's the best thing in, in a lot of these really streamlined games, is when they give the player a gun, because then it's still somewhat fun, at least. I mean, the Kane and Lynch, both games, are quite streamlined, but they do give you a gun, and just aiming a gun and keeping track of, you know, how much is in, in the clip, reloading, getting more ammo, that automatically gives you extra stuff. And I don't see why Batman couldn't have some kind of gun. It doesn't have to be something that kills, maybe not even something that's used against people, but let's say it, you know, let's say you have to shoot down, shoot down some of those choppers, like sometimes, if I recall, they'll, they'll start shooting at you if they, you know, maybe you could scare them off by firing some kind of electronic, you know, yeah, EMP something or other. Shoot at them a couple of times, they'll lose some important, you know, critical systems, but not enough, so they'll go into, they'll go in for a safe landing or, or something, just something to not make it so streamlined and ultimately kind of repetitive. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.